Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. Uh, you know, I just want to start this video by saying thank you so much for all the, the well-wishing comments that I got on last week's video. It was truly overwhelming. I really appreciate it. But today's video, and I'm feeling much better, by the way. Thank you so much. Today's video is going to be a third step in videos. Um, I did one a while back on how to um, create graphics on an odd shape. Uh, I did another one on how to do it with a light burn camera. Today, I'm going to show you how to position your graphics, no matter how small, and we're going to go really small today, no matter how small the graphics are, how to position them with precision to make sure that your projects come out absolutely perfect on any shape, any type of shape that you can possibly imagine. We're going to do a tiny little dog bone and we're going to do a long can opener today. And I'm going to show you how, just how to get all of that done like an expert. So let's jump over into Lightburn and get started right away. I'm going to say that <laughs> in the Lightburn video, I'm going to say that this is going to be a short one, but it's not. <laughs> you know, I'm not famous for those. But I can promise you that if you watch the whole video today... There's going to be lots of little things along the way that are going to be important to getting this right. So, you know, it's a long video, but I think it's going to be really worth your while. So let's go ahead and jump over into Lightburn and get started. All right, so let's get started in Lightburn. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to import uh, an image. So I'm going to click on that. And I will bring in the dog tag. Now, it's important that you get this perfectly straight, perfectly level. Let me show you what I did. Let me bring in this picture here. I got these little levels on Amazon, and they're cheap. You get a whole bunch of them. I, I used them in quite a few different places. And surprisingly enough, they're really accurate. Uh, I compared it to my $30 line level and it it was just spot on. So and they're very cheap. I'll put a link down below in the description. But what I did was it's important that you get a perfectly square level picture of the item that you're going to be photographing. Now this one's not perfectly in the center, but I just dropped this little level on here on my camera and I waited until it got right to the very center and then I snapped the picture. Now this one, I couldn't get it to the center because I was holding two cameras at the same time. But this is how I get a, a straight and level photograph to work with, to begin with. And that's probably the most important thing, is getting a straight and level photograph. This is the photograph that I got, and you can see that it is pretty darn straight and pretty level. And all I did in Windows Explorer was edit it and crop it. That's all. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to come over here and trace it. And you see we get a pretty good trace out of it. Not perfect, but pretty good. So uh, maybe we need to adjust it just a little bit by moving the slider. And I think that, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I think that looks perfect right there. So keep in mind that, that Lightburn's default setting up here is not always correct. So you do have to play with this slider sometimes. And that looks like it's pretty darn perfect. Maybe just a hair, just a hair more like that. And then if you use your center mouse wheel, you can move around on the plane like this and get it just to exactly where you want it. And that is exactly where I want it. I want it to be exact. So. We're going to say OK. We're going to put this layer into line mode. And actually, let me put it on the black because it's easier for me to see. And now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to press the comma key. Well, first I have to reselect it and then press the comma key to get it to flip over like that. So there is our final product. The only thing we have left to do is get rid of the anomalies. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come to the top here and I'm going to click on the single man to ungroup it. And the first thing I can do is get rid of that little guy right there. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle to get rid of this one. You don't have to do this because it's just giving you a, a basic work area. If I put my mouse pointer right here on the center of this 
and right on the line and I hold down shift and drag just straight across to the other side right there I'll get the same exact size circle now I can let go of shift and I'll put this right here and you'll see that it is the same size but a little cleaner and you don't have to do that so now on over here what I'll do is delete that one and now I have a much better circle and I do have a little anomaly down here that I can get rid of but you see the point you don't have to fix all of these I just wanted to fix that one to show you and then down here we have a few more anomalies it this doesn't really matter okay having these in here for your design because basically all we're doing oops I didn't mean to do that <laughs> basically all we're uh, looking to do here and I can just come across like that is just clean up some of this uh, we're just going to use this as a template we're not going to actually um, we're not going to actually use this it's going to be on a tool path so uh, I'm not really worried about all of these anomalies in here but we'll clean them up just for the fun of it just to get rid of what we have there now uh, what we can do is let's clean up some more of these uh, we'll just go across the whole thing if we drag left to right it'll select everything that's inside this red box so uh, now we don't want to select that one so I'm going to hold shift and uh, control and deselect that one and you see how it didn't select anything but that so that's okay so and there there there's nothing else left on here so we've got our perfect template at this point so I'll just go ahead and group these back together and now I've gone ahead and gotten my digital uh, micrometer I think is the actual word for it I don't really know <laughs> But anyway, I've gotten out my measuring tool. Let's put it that way. And I took measurements here from dead top center of the widest point, which is right here, to dead top center of the widest point down here. And that's going to be the widest point. And if you look up in here, let me put this into millimeters. You're going to see this is way too big. The measurement I came up with was 25.25 high. So in theory, let's see if this works, 25.25 high. So in theory, this should now be the right size wide as well. So on the width, we have 37.652. And on the, the width down here, I've got 37.75. Okay, so I'm going to say that that's accurate just the way it is. It's possible maybe I got the width off just a hair. But I'm going to trust this calculation because we took a good square photograph. And now I've got my template for my dog tag, which is a really small one. You see, it's only one and a half inches wide and it's not even an inch, uh, an inch high. So what I'm going to do now is come to my art library. Now that I've got my template, I'm going to say new and I'm going to put um, odd shapes. I'm going to say odd shapes. I'm going to come up here to my drive that I put it on normally come down to light burn and light burn art so this is my art directory so it's light burn light burn art odd shapes is the name of the folder I'm creating and I'm going to say save and here it is right here over here in my art library on the right hand side what I'm going to do now is select this guy right here and I'm going to click import and I'm going to call this one dog bone and that's it and just say okay so now I've got my dog bone template in there so that's one template that's down and the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm gonna be doing I'm not gonna do it in this video because I'm gonna try and keep this one short but the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm gonna be putting some circular graphics in these dog bones some accents around the circles here and you know the name like I might put flowers I mean every Everyone is probably going to be different for different customers. Uh, and trust me, people pay for this. 
if you go to the store and just get the dog bone with the dog's name imprinted on it and your phone number, it's $19.95 at PetSmart. $19.95 is the basic price for this. You can sell these all day long at $40 a piece. I am absolutely sure. You can go $25 to $40, whatever you feel comfortable at. Don't underprice your work. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do a custom design. It's going to be a setup fee for the customer. I'm going to charge them 40 bucks easily. It may only take me 10 minutes to do it, but I'm still going to charge them 40 bucks because that's the market price for something like this. Make sure that you don't underprice. The biggest mistake that laserists make when they try and get into this and do it as a business is underpricing their products, undervaluing their time. If the customer comes back six months later and says, you know, I need another dog tag for Bella. Well, I've already got that one saved in, in their folder. So yeah, okay, so I'll do it for 20 bucks, just like PetSmart would do, you know, 19.95. I'll do that one for 20 bucks because it's a repeat customer. Or if they have another dog, I'll do that one for 20 bucks. But you wanna get your first one, you wanna price it to the market price. And I think $40 is a fair price for a custom made dog tag, especially when I'm gonna add all types of little graphics and things in here. And I'm even gonna put some things around here. This very tiny little spot right here. I'm gonna run this one on the fiber laser. You can do this on the diode as well, it makes no difference. The fiber just will do it in a couple of seconds, so that's why I'm gonna do that. All right, so that one's out of the way. Now I'm gonna bring in another one. So I'm gonna import one more, which is going to be a big one. <laughs> Now, these are very high resolution photos, by the way. I want you to understand that you should do this in very high resolution. It doesn't matter if you shrink down the photo here in Lightburn to make it a manageable size because the resolution stays the same. So I'm gonna do the same process again on this one. I'm gonna trace this image and you see that the trace doesn't come out perfect. So. Uh, I'm going to start to move this over and let's see if we can get this to to trace right. We It's going to be a problem. Let's fade the image so that we can see it better by clicking fade image right here. And let's see what happens if we change the, uh, the cutoff. So let's bring the cutoff up. And that's really not helping much. So there's another thing that we can try now. We'll try and sketch it. And that is much better, the sketch trace. So let's go ahead and move this up again and start playing with the slider. We're gonna come back this way. And what, what I'm looking for in this one is this line right here to be nice and solid, okay? So this is the line that I'm concerned with. This line right here and this line around the outside. So I'm gonna move this around until I get to where I think those two lines are good. And that looks pretty good to me. I don't want the, the outer box sketched, so I'll just drag over the area that I want, which is just that right there. And now I'll say, okay. And there is my template right there. And that's a pretty good template, okay? So again, what we're gonna do is come up here and ungroup it. And then we're going to delete that outer line. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to press the period or the comma key to flip it. And I didn't have, I forgot that I had it ungrouped. <laughs> so I'll do control A to select everything and group it back together. Now I can press the comma or the period key, whichever one. Now on this one, you'll see that this is not lined up perfectly. So we're gonna fix that real quick before we go any further. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring one line down so that it's right on the line over there. And then I'm gonna adjust this side by moving the axis just a little bit like that. And now let's see what we get. And that looks pretty darn close. So I'm gonna say that that is good right there. All right, we're gonna zoom back out and we're gonna go back and do our dimensions that I did with the caliper. We'll select this, and my dimensions on the caliper were uh, 39.85 high. So let's do that. Let's do 39.85 and press enter. 
And now, uh, if my theory is correct, I have 177 even on the width, and you'll see 177.7. So that um, that's that should be perfect. As long as you have one good measurement in either direction, the other one's going to work. I take both measurements just to verify, and there is our template right there. So now we, what we can do, again, we can clean this up a little bit, but again, it's just going to be a toolpath. So we'll ungroup it, all right, and uh, we'll, we'll clean up some of this just by deleting it like that. And I don't know if we can, yeah, we can clean up some of this right here. And again, I'm dragging from the left to the right like that, and then just deleting everything that's in there. And you see how this is cleaning up and I really didn't want that to happen so I'll undo that and I'll just zoom in over here and do some of these a little more manually and like I said you don't need to do this okay so this this is just something that I'm doing because just because I want to <laughs> but uh, you're not gonna need to do all of this because we're just gonna use this um, as a template okay and I really don't want to do that out, outer line there either so I'll just leave that alone like that and uh, maybe take a few more of these dots out you know uh, we'll undo that one and let's see I can get some of these out down here without worrying too much about it but like I said earlier uh, you really don't need to to worry too much about all of this because it's just going to be a template okay what we're going to do with this is we're going to select everything regroup it and put it onto a toolpath like that so we're only going to use this as a toolpath it's never going to burn it's never going to output but we now know every place where we can put our design and our graphic and this is true to scale so we're going to have a perfect burn. Now, you know, it's really hard to do something like this and get a graphic. Uh, for instance, let's say you wanted to stipple this, okay? And you wanted to get everything that was metal. It would be really hard to get in as close to this as possible without having this toolpath over here. And with this, I mean, I can get into, you know, within 0.1 millimeters all the way around because I have a good idea where everything is. This is this can be a lifesaver for you. Now I'm going to also import this one and I'm, I'm going to call this one can opener. So now I've got my can opener and I've got my dog bone in here. And one thing I do want to do, uh, let me delete that one. Let me bring the dog bone back out, put it on a tool path as well. Now I'm going to come back in here and delete the dog bone and then select it over here and import it again and now I have it on a, a toolpath every time I use it so whenever I bring this out it'll be on a toolpath already it'll be ready to design and use so all I'll do is zoom all the way in I'll do all of my designing in here I'll put maybe the uh, pet's name the owner's name and phone number and do the rest in a floral pattern or do the rest in uh, you know if it's a bulldog do the rest in skulls you know <laughs> whatever whatever but you can make some really beautiful projects like this and it doesn't have to be metal it can be any odd shape that you have if you have an odd shaped piece of wood for example as long as you get a good level square photograph of it and take a measurement in one direction or the other at its widest point when you set that measurement in light burn so if you have a width of 177 millimeters you took your measurement and you set that 177 in light burn everything else is going to size proportionately so I know for sure now that this is going to be perfect when I go to burn this on the laser. All right, so let me now show you a practical real world use of this. Um, I'm going to come and get my can opener, bring it out onto the work bed right there. I've got a pattern over here that I would like to put on this can opener, okay? So uh, I'm going to leave that off on the side for a minute. I did have to come back and clean this up. The dog bone was just fine. 
I didn't have to do anything to that. But the can opener, I did have to clean clean up because there were some spots where it was open. So I had to come in and close all of those shapes. I probably would have just taken another picture and gotten a good uh, trace on it like I did with the dog bone. But uh, you have to make sure that all of these lines are closed. There, there can't be any open paths in there. So I want to put the pattern onto the can opener. But I also may want to put somebody, someone's name in the middle, let's say, for instance. So I'm going to put a primitive right here, a rectangle in the center. And I think maybe I want to put a radius on it. And five down here is good. Down bottom left, I'm clicking and activating the radius for the corners. And five is good. So I'll zoom in over here and I'll just put a radius on all four of these corners, like so. And then I'll come back to the selector tool. And with that selected, we'll go ahead and hold shift and select the outer part here. Come up here to the top where the bullseye is. I'm going to click that to put it directly in the center. And then we have to group these back together. So I'm going to hit group. So now we have all one group. You cannot apply masks to images unless it's all one group, the actual toolpath itself. So let's take our image and bring it over here. And now we can just drag over both of these, right click and click apply mask to image. And you'll see that uh, we now have the image right here that we can move around, put it wherever we want. I'm going to put it over here and I'm going to look at some reference point. You can see these two octagon shapes and these two octagon shapes. So what I'm going to do is try and get those lined up where they look pretty good. You got the line coming across the middle here. That looks pretty good. All of this looks good. And this is exactly the way that I would like to burn it. So I will now right click on it and I will flatten the image mask right here. And that will remove that. This will destroy the image and it will become part of the vector. So when I do that, we now have one graphic and nothing else. The last and final thing that I would like to do, I don't want to leave this blank. So I wanted to put in, I want to put something in here in the middle. So I'm going to put uh, LA Hobby Guy. <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to select it up here, put it on the black layer. I'm going to change that layer to fill. And uh, I might even change the font to something that I like a little better. And now with that selected, I'll hold shift again, select the outer and click the bullseye one more time. And now I know that that's perfectly in the middle of the job. That is how it's going to come out. Maybe I want this a little bigger, so I'll select it. Now, if I hold down the control key and grab any corner, it will scale proportionately exactly in the center. And I think that would make for a, a good looking bottle opener. What do you think? <laughs> So that's just how easy it is to use all these different functions in Lightburn. The, these are really, really simple once you get used to them and once you know how to use them. And this is going to be a, an awesome can opener. All right, so uh, here we go. The final result. And uh, I'll put some videos up uh, as we go here. But uh, this is the final result of the dog tag. And I did this dog tag and I know it's hard to see but I have a picture that I'll put up on the screen in a minute uh, but the picture doesn't show the finish so I wanted to do this in a white finish and you can see that it's pretty much readable from any direction no matter what you do it's in white it's got the little skulls in the bottom the dog bones up in the top and I don't know if you can see it up close it says woof in the middle with the dog prints on there came out really super awesome i wanted this to be a white finish so i did this one on the fiber laser and i think this one came out really great so i also did for you guys with the diode laser i did one on the diode and you'll see that i didn't quite get the framing down on this um, but it did come out pretty good the edges are perfect so if you see the edges it didn't go over the edge whatsoever it's just the the shift when i was doing the framing i didn't take enough time to get it framed perfectly but the idea behind this is the proportion 
So you can see that the proportion is exactly the size of this can opener. Um, so now I did go ahead and do two passes on this one because I wanted it to be a light gold. But I just wish that I had it shifted in the right spot because the actual graphic itself was perfectly fit onto the can opener. So those are the two that I did. Um, now, I want to just take a minute to talk about the importance of uh, measurements when it comes to this. So I got a, uh, I used my caliper. I'll, I'll put a picture up on the screen. Uh, this is a pretty decent caliper that uh, I've used for quite some time now. In fact, I bought another one so I can have one in uh, the wood shop and one here in the laser shop. The first one I got, they gave me for free. The second one I got, I actually, I actually purchased. And uh, in comparing this to the old Harbor Freight one that I had that was like, I don't know, 9 or $10, something like that, maybe $12. The, the, there's a huge difference between the two. When I take a measurement with this new caliper and compare it to the measurement with the Harbor Freight caliper, it's off by one or two millimeters. And that's something that you don't want to have. And then I measured it with a hard ruler. So I know that, you know, the measurement with the new caliper is perfect because I verified that with a regular tape measure. And uh, I know that the Harbor Freight was off by just a little bit. So that that's a problem. Make sure that you get a good caliper. And, you know, everything I talk about, I'll put links down below. Just click show more and you'll see the links to everything I talk about here in the video. Um, and, you know, it, it's just really important that you use a good caliper. And uh, I also use the 20 watt Monport fiber laser in the background uh, to do the, the dog tag and <laughs> to do my little dog tag here and in white. I could have done it in black. Black would look just as good. Um, I could have done it in uh, gold. You know, I could have done it in several different colors. I chose the white uh, just because I like the way white looks on the uh, on these metal tags. So I use the uh, the Monport 20 watt fiber on the dog tag, and I use the Comgro uh, 10 watt diode laser on the can opener. Now, of course, there's a big difference in time there. The the big can opener took uh, I think it was 28 minutes to do as opposed to well of course this one's much much smaller too and i did run a few passes on it so maybe all in all it took about uh you know 45 seconds to get the white effect yeah so i've got both i've done them on both of them now uh, you can do this on any laser you can do it on diode laser you can do it on co2 you can do it on fiber anything anything any type of laser that you use it's not the laser that we were talking about today it was the actual photographing and sizing of the template that we use to place our graphics. Now, on this one, the can opener, I did use a photograph to fill the entire workspace. And that's something that you can do. But typically, you're just gonna use it uh, as a framing tool. So you're, you're not gonna actually put a photograph on there. You're just gonna put your graphics in the spot leave it on a tool path so nothing burns and you know your odd shape now has graphics in the perfect spot and that's what this video was all about today getting your uh, odd shaped items and your graphics aligned perfectly exactly where you want them to be so that you can produce a professional result and the difference is is really clear i can go on to uh, Etsy or uh, Facebook Marketplace or Amazon and I can buy a, a $50 cutting board personalized or I can buy a $300 cutting board personalized. You, you will see the difference when you look at the two prices. One of them will be professionally done and the other one, well, it'll just be a personalized cutting board that nobody will give a second look at. So. You, you know, you really want, if you really want professional work, this is the way to do it. And you can have, you know, products that you run off. So you might have, you might have 
you know, 50 or 100 of these dog tags, you only need to create one template. And that's it. And then you position your, your graphics. And then like with the fiber laser, I actually, once I had it uh, on the work bed, I actually deleted the outside part so that I could light it and see exactly where the graphics were going to go. Uh, so that, you know, that's another thing too. On the fiber, you want to actually delete the tool path so that you only see the graphics themselves. Or, you know, you could use the tool path to align the edges. Completely up to you. Uh, it's, it's all, you know, everybody has their own style in doing this. And, uh, you know, I, I think um, learning, just learning how to position the graphics is the most important thing. And I hope that we've done that today. I hope you've learned how to do that with absolute precision where you can mark down to one millimeter or half a millimeter and position it exactly where you want on your work. So I hope you enjoyed this video today as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And as always, I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.